first epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, chapter 6. Dare any of you, having a, mas- having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? This is why I think the Holy Spirit's talking through this guy because here he's saying, "No, know ye not that we should judge angels?" Okay, if then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbeliever, unbelievers. Now therefore there is, an, there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Um, there's somewhere else in here where it says you're not supposed to be that it well, I don't know if it's negative like that or if it just says God is the law God is the judge you are not supposed to be judges and lawyers I would like to find where that is because this is a repetition of that Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Hmm. He's saying, so don't go to court all the time. He's saying, just suffer being defrauded. Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. What? <laughs> meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? That's very important. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Oh, for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. So, if you don't think there is a complete genetic exchange between you and whoever else you ever, ever sleep with in your life, it's really best. <laughs> well, what a good rule, right? But pretty much nobody ever follows this one. But understand, it's very clear here. And this is probably the Holy Spirit speaking through him. Because anytime you sleep with someone, you're trading genetics. 
you're getting their genes in your DNA. Even if you you don't um, have a baby, even if you don't develop um, a fetus, you you still exchanged all your genes, all of them. And you see what it says here? Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. It's pretty scary, right? If your husband or your wife goes around doing things like this, like, can you imagine, like, oh. The problem with the fornication thing is that when he, God said in the beginning, do not take wives, do not, not, not take wives as for, foreign wives. Don't do it because the next thing you'll do is you'll start um, doing idolatry to their gods, right? Without a doubt. It happens very slowly, but it happens. You see him in 10 years, he forgot all about God and he's doing whatever she's doing because it's just the way it is. And... The other thing is that look at all the transhumanism that went on with fornication, fornication, fornication. So he's pointing that out. Like the last chapter is kind of about it, the last couple. Well, he's kind of bitching about all of it in the last chapter. But one seemed to kind of be more about food. This is about fornication. It it says on the top, Paul's teaching on marriage. Okay. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not. That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. I remember one time I was in ice skating rink in Sunnyvale, and the guy, I don't know what his job was there. Maybe he was like at the snack bar or something, but I was at 10 or something, and I'm sitting there. And he's like, we. I started asking him, do you have any tattoos, right? And he said, no, my, bo my body's a temple. Like, your body is a temple. You don't want to... And I guess he was Jewish. I didn't realize that then. But because I never heard any Catholics talking about it. But you see, he is Catholic and he is talking about this. And your body is a temple. And I don't, I don't know if I really read that sticks out in... Deuteronomy or Levitical, Leviticus, but look what he says. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Amen. That's awesome. Okay. Four. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. We're bought for a price. With a price. Awesome. Let's try to do seven. Chapter seven. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. 
For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner, and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak. I, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. That's really nice, right? <clears throat> Else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God hath distributed to every man as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. If any man called being circumcised, let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision, let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it, but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Ye are bought with a price. Here we go again. Be not the servants of men. I heard that, bro. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therein abide with God. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be, art thou bound into a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they have none. And they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoiced not, and they that buy as though they possessed not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belongeth to the Lord. How may he please the Lord? But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world. How may he please his wife? Hmm. See that? It's better to be unmarried. See that? 
There is difference also between a man and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. This is true, right? And this I speak for your own profit. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and needs so require, let him do what he will, he sinneth not, let them marry. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin, doeth well. So then he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord, but she is happier if she so abide after my judgment, and I think also that I have the Spirit of God. <laughs>